Welcome to CSC 201, lesson 5657, which is defining sequences recursively and solving recurrence relations by iteration. So <clears throat> defining a sequence recursively means we start by defining a few initial terms and later terms are defined recursively in terms of their relationship to previous terms in the sequence. So a famous example is the Fibonacci sequence that arose from um, this famous problem posed by Fibonacci. He said a single pair of rabbits, uh, a male and a female, is born at the beginning of a year. Assume the following conditions. Rabbit pairs are not fertile during their first month of life, but thereafter give birth to one new male-female pair at the end of every month, and no rabbits die. How many rabbits will there be at the end of the year? So I've created a chart to help us count. Um, they said we start with a single pair of rabbits. So this is R1, R1, right? This is rabbit pair number one. Um, and they're babies, which is why I put this in lowercase r. So they were just born, which means that they are not going to reproduce into month two. They're going to grow up. Okay, so in month two, the same two rabbits uh, live on. So let's call them big R1 and big R1. Okay. And that's it. Um, we don't have any more rabbits because rabbit pair one was not ready to reproduce. But in month three, um, the original rabbits live on. Rabbit one and rabbit one are still there. Um, and they can now have babies. So we have rabbit pair two. So that means now I have two pairs, right? So I started with one pair. Okay. Um, the next month there was still one pair because they weren't old enough to reproduce. They just grew up, so they're still there. And then in the third month, the original pair are still there and they had babies. So now I have two pairs, rabbit pair one and rabbit pair two, two pairs. Okay, in the next month, um, rabbit pair one lives on. Rabbit pair two grows up. And, but rabbit pair two was, well, they were just babies here. So they didn't reproduce going into month four. They don't reproduce until their second month. Um, but rabbit pair one has another pair of babies. Okay, so rabbit pair one um, produces a third pair, R3. And that means now I have three pairs of rabbits, okay? The originals, um, and then the originals have reproduced twice, okay? So let's do, so that's three pairs. We'll do um, one or two more months and see if we can see a pattern. In month five, all the rabbits that were there in month four live on. So rabbits one, rabbit pair one, rabbit pair two, and rabbit pair three live on, but rabbit pair three grows up. So we'll write that in capital R. And then who reproduced? What, what rabbits were um, grown-ups in month four? So rabbit pair one were grown-ups, rabbit pair two were grown-ups, rabbit pair three were babies, so they didn't reproduce. So I'm gonna have one, two more um, sets of babies, R4 and R5. So that's five pairs of rabbits now. Okay, another month. So all the rabbits that are in month five live on. So I have R1, R2, whoops, I'm supposed to do them in pairs. Okay, so rabbit pair one, rabbit pair two, rabbit pair three, and then four and five live on, but they grow up to be um, adult rabbits. Okay, and then, so everyone from the previous month lived on. Who reproduced? Just one, two, and three. Because rabbits, rabbit pair four and rabbit pair five were just babies. So we have three new pairs that from, from month five, the month five adults. So that's going to be R6 babies, R7 babies, and R8 babies. So that is eight total pairs. All right, so rather than writing them all down here, I'm gonna say 
um, in month seven, all of my previous existing rabbits live on. So I had eight rabbits in month six. They all live on. So eight big R's, right? And who reproduced? Who reproduced it? In month six, the rabbits that were old enough were rabbit pairs one through five. So not six, seven, and eight. They were just babies. So one through five. So I'm going to have plus five more little rabbits, which is 13 rabbits. And then in month eight, all the 13 from the previous month move on. So I've got 13, um, 13 adults. But how many, um, how many were adults the previous month, right? So only these eight from the previous month can reproduce. So I'm going to add eight more little babies. So 13 and 8 is 21. All right, one more. Okay, so month 9, all 21 from the previous month live on and are now adults. Okay, and then how many babies, right? Well, how many were adults the previous month? 13. So I'm going to have 13 more baby rabbits, and 21 and 13 is 34. So you may see the pattern developing. Every month, um, the number of rabbits is equal to the number of rabbits from the previous two months, right? 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13, 8 and 13 is 21, 13 and 21 is 34, and I should be able to finish this. 21 and 34 is 55, 34 and 55 is 89, and 55 and 89 is 144. So this is a recursively defined sequence because we calculate each number in the list based on the numbers that came before it in the list, not based off of a formula um, for the location in the list. Okay, so if I wanna write a recursive formula for the Fibonacci numbers, I start by telling you my two initial numbers. F1 and F2 are both one. And then I need a formula for the kth number in the list, F sub K. It's always equal to the number right before it in the list, so that would be F sub K minus one plus the number right before that, which is f sub k minus 2. So for example, if I want to know f sub 8, that would be f7 plus f6, the two previous numbers in the list. Okay, And f8 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight. So F8 would be 21, which is 13 plus 8. So the two previous numbers in the list. Here's another example. Um, I'm giving you the first element in the list is a 1. And then for all k's bigger than 1, you calculate a sub k by looking at the previous number in the list and adding 3. So this says calculate any number in the list, the kth number, by looking at the number right before it and adding 3. So my first number in the list is a 1. And then the next number is the number before it, which is 1, plus 3, which is 4. And then the third number in the list is the second number in the list, plus 3. So 4 plus 3 is 7. And we just keep adding 3. 7 plus 3 is 10. Plus 3 is 13. 16, 19, 22, 25, 28. And there's 10 numbers in the list. Now, what I gave you was a recursive formula, right? It, it means you have to know the number that came right before it in order to get the number you're interested in. So I'm going to try to come up with an explicit formula for the recursively defined sequence. And this is also known as solving an occurrence, uh, a recurrence relation. So the key is to just write all of your calculations down but not do any calculations. So to, it'll help you see patterns. So A1 was one, that was given, OK? 
okay? A2, we calculate the second number in the list by looking at the first number in the list and adding three. And I'm not gonna actually add them together. I'm just gonna leave it as one plus three. And then the third number in the list is the number before it, right? A2 plus three. And A2 is one plus three. And then plus the three, right? This was A2. And A4 is the number before it, which is one plus three plus three, right? That's A3. And then I'm gonna add three more. And A5 is A4, which is one plus three plus three plus three plus three more. Right, this is A4. So that should be enough um, to see the pattern. I'm always adding one more three. Repeated addition is just multiplication. So this is one plus three times four, because there are four threes there. And A4, that's one plus three times three. And this is one plus three times two. And this is one plus three times one. And this is one plus three times zero. So every single term in the list is being written as one plus three times something. So let's see, um, A sub K is one plus three times something. Is the something K, right? So is the subscript the thing that goes in here? So for A1, what I put in the parentheses was a zero. A2, I put in a one. A3, I put in a two. A4, I put in a three. And A5, I put in a four. It's always one smaller than the subscript. So I'll put a K minus one. And then I could simplify this a bit and I would get um, 3K minus two as my explicit formula. And then now that I have an explicit formula, it's really a guess because I based this guess off a pattern that I observed in the first five um, terms of the sequence. So to verify that this guess works, I have to use, I can use mathematical induction. So I have to show it for the base case. So step one is show for um, A1. Show that it holds for A1. So A1, I know, is uh, one, right? When I use the recursively, it, it was given, actually. A1 is one, it's given. Um, the formula, 3K minus two, would be three times one minus two, which is, in fact, one. Okay, so the formula gives me the same thing that my given value of A1 was. Step two is the induction step, and I have to suppose that it works for, um, for a, a generic K. So suppose it's true that A sub K equals three K minus two. And I need to show that a sub k plus one would be three times k plus one minus two. And if you simplify that, just a quick distribute and combine like terms, we'd get three k plus one. So this is what I'm looking to show. Okay, and what I'm allowed to work with is that this is true. Okay, I know a sub k equals 3k minus 2. All right, so a sub k plus 1, which is what I want to prove something about. Okay, I want to prove this explicit formula. So what I know for sure is that it equals the number before it plus 3. So the number right before a sub k plus 1 is a sub k, and I just add 3 to it. Every number in the list is the number before it plus three. So that is something I absolutely know that was given. What I'm trying to um, test is the explicit formula. Now, a sub k, I am supposing is three k minus two. So I'm gonna replace this a sub k with a three k minus two. And 
and then that simplifies to 3k plus 1, which is exactly what I was trying to show a sub k plus 1 equals. Okay, another example um, where we're going to work with a recursive formula, come up with an explicit formula, and, and prove it using mathematical induction. So let's suppose you invest $100 in a savings account that earns 5% annual interest. I want to write a recursive formula for the amount of money in the account after n years. Well, I know the amount of money um, at the beginning of um, time, when we first start measuring, a sub zero is going to be $100, okay, right at the moment we open the account, $100. And then the amount of money any given year is equal to the amount of money from the previous year plus 5% more, plus 5% of the amount from the previous year, which simplifies to 1.05 times a sub k minus 1. So that is, the 1 is for 100%. You have 100% of what you had the year before, and then plus 5% more. So 105% of what you had the previous year. So that is my recursive formula. To write an explicit formula, um, I'm going to use recursion. I'm going to write down how much I have in for like five, four or five years. And I'm going to try to see a pattern. So A0 is $100. And A1, the amount I have after one year, is going to be 1.05 times 100. And I'm not going to actually calculate that. This is the key to finding an explicit formula, is to write out the calculation and not actually do it. That's how you see the patterns. Okay, so A2, the amount of money I have in year two, is the amount from the year before, which is this, times 1.05. So I have to do 1.05 times this. So 1.05 times the amount from the previous year, 1.05 times 100. And then A3 is going to be 1.05 times A2. And A2 is 1.05 times 1.05 times 100. And A4 is 1.05 times whatever I had the year before, which is just the amount from A3, which is 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05 times 100. Okay, so I think that should be enough <clears throat> to see a pattern. You can see what's happening is that I'm just multiplying by an additional 1.05 every year. So here I had one, and then I have two, and then three, and then four. And um, one thing I can do to help me see a pattern is to just recognize that repeated multiplication um, we usually denote with an exponent. So 1.05 times itself four times is 1.05 to the fourth. So this is 1.05 to the fourth times 100. And this is 1.05 cubed times 100. And this is 1.05 squared times 100. And this is 1.05 to the first times 100. And this would be 1.05 to the zero times 100. So my guess for a sub k or a sub n would be, um, let's look at, the, what's changing is the exponent. Every um, year is 1.05 to a power times 100, and the power always matches the subscript. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. So if my subscript is n, then my formula would be 1.05 to the n times 100. And then I want to use mathematical induction to verify that the explicit formula is correct. Because again, this is very convincing, right? Seeing this pattern, but it's based on only five years of data. Um, so I want to just want to verify that this will be true no matter what the subscript is. 
So my base case, I need to show that it's true for A naught. Okay, so I know A naught is 100, right? That's my initial investment, it's given. Okay, and my formula says that A naught would be 1.05 to the zero times 100, which is 100. Okay, so check. Step two is the induction step. And I wanna suppose the formula is true for A sub K. And I need to show I'm supposing this is true, and I need to show that a sub k plus 1 is 1 1.05 to the k plus 1 times 100. So I want to observe that a sub k plus 1, recursively, I defined... Um, any, any um, year, the amount I have in the account at any given year is the year before times 1.05. So A sub K plus 1 would be 1.05 times the year before, which is A sub K. And then A sub K, I am supposing, is 1.05 to the K times 100. So this is 1.05 times a sub k, which is 1.05 to the k times 100. And then 1.05 to the first times 1.05 to the k is 1.05 to the k plus 1 times 100, which is precisely what I was trying to show, that a sub k plus 1 equals this. And I have a sub k plus 1 equals this. Okay, and just for fun, how much money is in the account after 10 years? So A sub 10, that would be 1.05 to the 10th times 100. And that comes out to $162.88.